So let's move on to wide receivers, folks. Again, 22 questions. Love to see it. Get those thumbs up in. Likes, shares, retweets, all that good stuff uh, to help us grow. And again, reminder, Prediction Strike is presenting this show. You can see their logo up there at the top. And it's a great way to take this advice, make it more actionable, make some real money off some of these trends that we're seeing here, this usage report uh, that we're diving into. But let's talk about wide receivers. And I just want to go down the list of the, the wide receiver target leaders here. And, and it's just to further the argument of why you need to go running backs early. Devontae Adams, 18. Okay, first rounder. That was a no-brainer. We knew it. Chase Claypool, 15 targets. Jacoby Myers, 14 targets. Cole Beasley, 13 targets. Jalen Waddle, 13 targets. Cooper Cup, 12 targets. And the most fantasy points besides Mike Williams this week, another beast we're going to talk about. DJ Moore, 12 targets. Keenan Allen, 12 targets. Mike Gusecki, 12 targets. Tight end, okay. Michael Pittman, 12 targets. We'll get the tight end. Don't worry. Gusecki will be there. And Brandon Cooks, 11. I mean, you look at that list, well over half of it you could have had beyond round eight. All but Devontae Adams went after round four. Right? And Cooper Cup, I guess, and DJ Moore, round four-ish targets. Further proof that you need to load up on these running backs because volume is so much more abundant late for the wide receiver position compared to the running back position. Of course, we got to talk about Cooper Cup. I mean, 30% team's target share through three games. He's the only joined by Brandon Cooks, DK Metcalf, and DJ Moore in that field. Pretty impressive list, especially Cooks and DJ Moore looking like two of the better values of the year right now. And you also had 25% target share in all three games for Cooper Cup, for Mike Williams, and also Sammy Watkins, an intriguing pickup there. But let's dive into some specific names. We talked about King Adams at the top, 12 catches on 18 targets, 132 at a TD. Rodgers is looking back. He's looking motored. You saw the way he celebrated that field goal. Great to see for all you Devontae Adams managers out there. Uh, love to see this type of performance there. Could have had another touchdown too. Could have been an even bigger day, but we're not going to get greedy. And again, Cooper Cup, that breakfast narrative, seeing 93% of the routes. He is the every down alpha. It, 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 there was no question. We've been saying that since week one, the way he was used. The fact that he had breakfast every day, the breakfast club narrative might be my favorite of all. And it's clear it, it's worked out. Him and, and Stafford have an insane rapport. One of those guys that if you had invested in the preseason on Prediction Strike, your money will be going through the roof with him. He is a monster. The wide receiver one in fantasy football, another two touchdown day. Great performance here from Cooper Cup. But what this is kind of segueing into is what is going on with Robert Woods? He's now ranked the wide receiver 46, wide receiver 44, and wide receiver 61 through these last uh, opening three weeks. Most people, and admittedly and embarrassingly, myself included, were taking Robert Woods ahead of Cooper Cup this preseason. I don't know that he's a buy low. I know a lot of people are emphasizing this guy as a buy low. I get it. He's one of these steadier fantasy products of the last four seasons, but it seems like this offense, especially with you know Stafford, just seems completely different with Robert Woods' usage. In fact, we saw more fantasy points from Van Jefferson and then, of course, Deshaun Jackson also getting deep for 120 in a TD. It's Other than Cooper Cup, I think it's going to be tough to trust Woods on a weekly basis. I hope I'm wrong. I hope he rebounds because I own him almost everywhere. But damn, I'd be looking so pretty in a lot of best balls if I had changed that Robert Woods share to Cooper Cup. I would do anything to be able to do that. We also saw Michael Pittman back-to-back 12 target weeks. This week only hauling in six for 68. But encouraging nonetheless that he's seeing this many targets in back-to-back weeks. He's gone from 11.4 target share to now 35.3 to 33.3% target share over these last few weeks. It continues to be a huge opportunity with T.Y. Hilton gone, and I imagine this will continue even when he, he comes back. Rondo Mayo, the, the sweetheart, the darling of last week's waiver wire, someone I was printing out to go get. Very discouraging to see just one target, one yard. Oh, God, couldn't be worse than that. We saw A.J. Green, five catches, 112. Christian Kirk, seven for 104. It's going to be tough to project this offense from a week-to-week basis. It was looking like they had like eight plays in the book dialed up for more on a week-to-week basis, but maybe not. I would rather have Christian Kirk at this point than Rondell Moore for the rest of the season. The big board reflects that. Uh, he's got way more air yards and end zone targets. Yeah, I get Rondale, you know, future in Dynasty, one of the best dashes you could have. He still looks electric, but you're going to get games like this where he completely disappears. So very discouraging. Meanwhile, DeAndre Hopkins, am I freaking out? No. Three catches on six targets, 21 yards. They didn't need him. There was the Jags. He's banged up. They kind of let this guy have a breather, even though he played most of the snaps. 
let's not get him hit. Let's not get him hurt. Let's let's keep him going. Um, so that was that was important to note. Brandon Ayuk sighting here, folks. Four catches on six targets, 37 yards and a TD. Not a monster day, but you got to be breathing a huge sigh of relief if you've been patient, you've been holding on to him, or if you try to buy low. I still think you could try to buy low because there's going to be some explosion weeks coming. He looked good. He looked explosive. He was leaping up the air like we're used to. 90% route participation. Great stuff to see. Everything is trending up, in my opinion, for Brandon Ayuk, especially when Trey Lance takes over with that cannon deep arm. I, I really think now's the time. You, you see that he's not – Trent Sherfield, 4% route participation, right? That's what you want to see. Rather than this being a near-even split after these last couple of weeks, great to see Ayuk. Good celebration to have uh, if you're owning him because it's only uphill, I think, from here. Marvin Jones continues to pace the Jags. Once again, in catches, six targets, eight yards, 62. Not a monster day, but a guy that's going to be a dependable wide receiver three, maybe even wide receiver two moving forward. 24.6% target share compared to 19.3% DJ Chark and 17.5% for LaVisca Chanel. I was projecting this one all wrong, thinking Chanel was the guy to own. I did like Marvin Jones and his value too. I own both of them in a lot of leagues. Chanel's looking almost cuttable at this point, whereas Jones is a clear cut every week starter moving forward on a team that is always going to have to chuck because of how bad they are. Meanwhile, as we mentioned, Sammy Watkins, 25% target share all three weeks this season, four catches on seven targets, 68 yards. I mean, mediocre, not a huge stat line, but very involved. Now, granted, Rashad Bateman is practicing this week eligible to come off the IR. We don't know exactly how he's going to look. Will obviously impact Sammy Watkins if Bateman's looking good, but just worth noting how valuable Watkins has been. Certainly someone that you want to hang on to. Jamar Chase, again, two touchdowns, 65 yards, unguardable in the red zone. And Burrow clearly locking into his guy from LSU when he gets out there. Yeah, granted, T. Higgins was out, and that's going to be you know a big mouth to feed on a week-to-week basis. Tyler Boyd also saw more targets, seeing so seven of them. But it was Chase making the big plays, getting open in the red zone. I think he's locked and loaded as a, a high-end wide receiver, too, with low-end weekly wide receiver one upside. Myers, Jacoby Myers, we mentioned him at the top when we were talking about all the leading target shares. He gets nine uh, catches on 14 freaking targets, 94 yards. This kind of highlights the, the upside and the downside. When they're down, they need to chuck. He is the slot receiver. He's the Edelman chain-moving possession guy. But he doesn't score. So fantasy-wise, like 9 for 94, great in PPR leagues. you got to love a game like that. But in half, and especially in standard, like is this really that valuable? Can you force him into your lineups every week? Of course, 9 for 94 is valuable. But on the days where they don't have to chuck it quite as much, is that going to be as promising? Of course, next week facing Tom Brady and the Bucks, they're going to need to boot two points. So you can trust Myers on weeks like that. Uh, but still. It's just like the unsexiest high volume role in the NFL right now. Tyree Kill, what is going on? Five catches, seven targets, 56 yards, back to back quiet efforts following a 40 point week one. I still think by low all day if anyone's panicking over this. They, they're they going to figure it out. I get that teams, maybe there's this blueprint for stopping Tyree Kill and slowing down the Chiefs' offense. Other people do need to step up. I don't think this is going to continue at nearly the rate of him getting shut out these last couple of weeks. He had two good corners in back-to-back weeks, just shut, shutting him down with safety help over the top. I'd be buying low everywhere on Tyreek Hill if people are freaking out. We'll drop him. You know, he was my number one receiver on the board. He goes below Adams, you know, after an 18 target day for Devontae Adams. He's back to the king spot, no doubt. Maybe Cooper Cup rises above Tyreek Hill. <laughs> Can't believe those words just came out of my mouth and they're true. But still, it's Tyreek Hill. He's going to explode sooner than later, probably as early as next week against the bad Eagles secondary. Another good buy low at the receiver position. Stephon Diggs, a first rounder that has not yielded a single wide receiver one performance yet. Not even a top 24, not even a wide receiver two performance yet this year. Yet he's still seen 28% of targets, 27% and 23% these last few weeks. The difference is the lack of conversions on these 15 plus air yard targets. One catch on eight of his targets at, through three weeks. At this time last year, Stefan Diggs had seen seven catches on seven of such targets of 15 plus air yards through three weeks. So they're not converting at that high of rate. Emmanuel Sanders is also proving to be a fantastic number two there right now. Cole Beasley still a chain moving monster. It, it seems to me Diggs's role is going to be less consistent 
far less consistent even than what it was last year. But I still think this is the the lowest we're going to see his value. I think he has a, a big explosion game coming forward. Mike Williams, uh, maybe we should have started with this guy. <laughs> Seven catches, nine targets, 122 and two TDs, over 30 fantasy points. Right now, the wide receiver one for week three, the wide receiver two in fantasy football so far, has 23, 23, 33 fantasy points across his first three games. How can you not believe at this point? I don't think anybody does it, doubts it anymore. This was a guy, this is probably our best call of 2021, saying the, you know, we bought in to the fact that he could be the Mike Thomas. You know, we did think Keenan Allen's still the main guy here, the, the one that you want to own, but Mike Williams could see eight to, to 12 targets, higher percentage looks as Joe Lombardi raved about it. I didn't see it being this valuable to the point that he might even be ranked ahead of Keenan Allen moving forward on, on weekly rankings. Just an absolute monster. It's crazy to see, you know, you don't typically see a round year five breakout, but he nothing about his games looked flukish. And we've always seen the big plays and these catches that like only a handful of people can make in the NFL. But now that they're using him in a higher volume, that again, that X role that they compared him to Mike Thomas for, he's playing like Mike Thomas right now. That's insane. It's awesome. Probably will taper off a little bit, but I don't think it's something that you're, you should be selling. This isn't a sell high. This is a hold. And if you can get chairs for, for cheap right now, I would be looking to do so. We mentioned Manny Sanders, solid day, 94 yards, two scores, very solid day, six targets and five catches, looking like one of the best guys that's still out there in over half a leagues for you to go and scream and pick up. But Beasley is also heavily involved. The most targets pacing the team with 13, 11 catches, 98 yards, a PPR monster. Again, a reason to be a little bit lower on digs, still a great by low in my opinion, is the fact that these two are looking fantastic. Uh, in this offense, but more so just, again, we talked about Josh Allen at the top. These guys are back and cooking. Uh, so it's great to see. I did want to highlight Marquise Brown. <laughs> three <laughs> catches on seven targets, three dropped touchdowns though. He had an expected fantasy points of over 35 dropped. So, I mean, his expected fantasy points might total be like 12, 50 given he dropped 35 expected points and none of them were hard catches. Drops aren't typically sticky. I don't think this is going to be something that carries forward. Week to week, but Bateman's going to be back soon. Um, uh, he's roasting. The more important thing was how wide open he was. He there's not a coverage that is holding him in right now. Who's been among the biggest risers in the rest of the season, big board all year. I would see if you can get him. You know, if his owner's pissed off about the drops and fuming and the fact that they should have won their week, I would be tossing in some buy lows on Marquise Brown for sure. I did want to mention to AJ Brown: Is there a bigger bust at this point? Especially at the wide receiver position. Granted, an injury, you know, what can you do? But he hasn't looked like he's playing 100% all year, and now he's week to week with a strained hamstring. You know, as a lot of buy low advice out there for him, and it made sense given how talented this guy is. At this point, it looks like you'd be buying into a bad, just broken season. You get that kind of vibe from it. At least I do. Not a guy I'm targeting anymore. Um, I- I'm avoiding him pretty much at all costs at this point. So AJ Brown, if you can sell him for any type of value, I would I would sell low. I would sell and get what I can at this point. Did want to mention Marquez Callaway, 41 yards and a TD on five targets. Like seems like a promising mini breakout game, but none of the Saints receivers ran a route on or more than 60% of the pass plays. He was, you know, nobody saw more than 50 yards other than Kamara. Uh, it's just a gross situation. The touchdown was like one of the flukiest should have been picked off gross throws from Jameis Winston. So I'm not buying that. Didn't love what I saw over there from, um, from Marquez Callaway. So I'll be selling that performance for sure. We also had Henry Ruggs though, you know, seven targets, four catches, 78 yards. But what I really liked aligning in the backfield, you know, getting peppered downfield, hauling in a, you know, a 16 yard catch and run going over people. He's looking more complete. This is a guy that's coming along as a wide receiver here. And yeah, Brian Edwards, 89 yards that led the team. Ruggs and Darren Waller paced the team with targets. Uh, and Ruggs had more yards than him. So a little bit of a concern for Waller moving forward, the fact that these guys are looking as good as they are. And I think Ruggs has some promising wide receiver three appeal moving forward. Target hog, though, Jalen Waddle. 13 targets, 12 catches, 58 yards, you know, D- disgusting efficiency, useless in that sense. But the 13 targets is what you're drawn to, especially because Will Fuller was playing this game. Now, granted, Jacoby Brissett's the QB. I don't think that, you know, 
it, you got to look at Tua's games and all that stuff. But the fact that they were dialing them him up as much, even with Fuller, even with Parker active, was very encouraging. So I, I think he's got to be in your lineups every single week moving forward, given the workload that Jalen Waddell is seeing. Guy that you could bench him for, uh, or bench, you know, for Jalen Waddell rather, a guy that I don't really want to play. I guess he gets Detroit this week, but holy crap, Allen Robinson, what is happening here? Two catches, 27 yards. What an awful third round pick right now. I was all in. I, I thought this guy was, you know, he hasn't finished below the wide receiver eight because he been in Chicago. Now he's supposed to get the best quarterback in his career, whether it's Dalton, whether it's Fields. Now I'm sitting here begging. It was Trubisky throwing him the rock, chucking it up and making sure this guy got fed. I guess he has a 25.3% target share, but similar to Montgomery, does it matter in an offense that is as anemic and pathetic as the Bears right now? 47 total yards of offense? Just disgusting. Six completions on the afternoon? I don't think you can trust him until we see any type of life from this attack. One of the biggest fallers moving forward. He hasn't finished above the wide receiver 49 in a single week. Just embarrassing. Disgusting. And, and on that note, Darnell Mooney, you know, one catch, nine yards. He can't be started. He had a 48. He drew some nice pass interference to drive, and that's the biggest play they had all day. It was a pass interference. But still, uh, maybe cuttable at this point, Darnell Mooney, uh, given how bad this offense looks. If you cut him, you know, maybe you look at Colin Johnson. Four catches, 51 yards, given the injuries to Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton and Kenny Galladay and Evan Ingram being banged up. Colin Johnson, who was kind of a darling over there with the Jags, big body, looking solid. He might end up being their leading tar target these next couple of weeks if those injuries persist. So I wanted to shout him out. He'll be featured on the Waiver Wire show. Another target hog, though, second in wide receiver targets this week was Chase Claypool, 15 of them. Again, Deontay Johnson out. Uh, you know, Juju lifted, leaving very early. It was all Harris, 19 targets, and Claypool, 15. He hauls in nine of them for 96 yards, so it wasn't like that That great. You see 15 targets, you should probably have a better day than this. Uh, he also got hurt. He was limping around a bit, but worthwhile, uh, you know, in terms of bumping up that value if these guys remain hurt. It's something to, to consider for sure. One guy I, I probably should have started with at the top is Odell Beckham. Only played 64% of the snaps, but he still put up nine targets, almost a 30% target share, five catches, 77 yards, and more importantly, just passing the eyeball test. Looking fantastic. A guy that I would be going out to get every single place I could. He looks like he's ready for another one of those 150, two TD days exploding in the near future. I would lock him into my lineups moving forward. I think the snaps, again, he did this damage on only 64% of the snaps. I think moving forward, you see those numbers continue to climb, as will the stats following them. So I love that performance. Last but not least, well, yeah, at last and least, KJ Osborne, 26 yards, two targets, getting outplayed and out-targeted by Tyler freaking Conklin. Ugh, embarrassing. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.